a WKU romp at this point. I think they're feeling very confident after that first point. What do you think, Jazzy? Yeah, I think uh, we may be seeing a little bit of inspired play from WKU in the absence of their captain, Nick Johnson, and definitely the heart and soul of that Hilltopper team. People tend to rally when their leaders go down, so I think we're seeing a little bit that, of that right now as Nick has returned to the bench area uh, along with his teammates, but is still looking pretty dazed. But we might see him come back in in the next point. He seems to be feeling better. I'm back. How was Nick? Was he pretty dazed? <laughs> he, he was a little dazed. Uh, no obvious signs of concussion, though, so I think he just rung his bell, and he even said you know, he was just feeling a little woozy, understandably, but knew where he was, knew who he was, knew what day it was, so... Well, we were saying, Alex, that we liked what we saw there at the end of that last point from WKU. A lot more aggressive. And I said, you just got to kind of assert your dominance here. If this is a game that you should win handily, go win it handily. And let's make a statement for the rest of day one and day two. Now, see, but see, this point, in my opinion, this is going to be a crucial point because this will show, uh, are they a practice enough team to be able to because that first point they should have a pretty good idea of how they should play against this team so are they going to try to run the same kind of slower tactic they did last time or are they really going to push this game because uh, I, I would hope they realize that they can play aggressively against this team this team isn't going to be able to retaliate against aggress an aggressive attack nice excellent block there uh, they're not going to be able to retaliate as aggressively as Saginaw uh, was able to well I think what we're saying here is WKU is not intimidated by VCU. And they have to keep that mindset regardless of their opponent. Because here's the thing. Yeah, a ball from Saginaw Valley might sting just a little bit more than VCU. But at the end of the day, you're going to get over it just as quickly if it's coming from Sag Valley or if it's coming from VCU. So you just look have at, to look, look, at, look at that push. Look at that push. We didn't see a single push like that from Western during the Saginaw game. And now, instead of having two players on the team that can run, half the team just ran up the court. That's what we need to see more of. And I, I think, to your exact point, their confidence is back. So that's what I want to – perfect. Again, per, pushes on both sides all the way up to half court, whereas before you couldn't scare Western to get past their own uh, free throw line. Ben, thoughts? <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, I'm thinking that this is going to be an easy win for WKU, like we've been saying. Um, I'm gonna... so, more what I want to know, why did we not see this same Western against Saginaw? Oh, they're scared. Deer in the headlights, for sure. They're just scared. I mean, you, you are going to be intimidated by Michigan teams just because they, are, they have arms. They have every single player on their team has an arm. VCU might have only three or four arms on their entire squad. And, uh, you know, the Michigan States have a bunch, like 9, 10, 11, 12 arms that you have to worry about. So you're just scared. And, and I don't know if we can see it on the camera, but down here, they're even doing a better job at their defensive screen. Here on the left-hand side, they're bunching up behind their blockers. We didn't have that before. We had this kind of, against Saginaw, this just kind of swirling mass of players kind of look like constantly trying to be behind one another. So they're starting to show a hint of that strategy that I know they know, uh, but it's just, I, I, I agree, getting them to implement it, well, like you said. It's, it's like that famous quote from Mike Tyson, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. Western came into that game against Saginaw with the plan, got punched in the face, and everything went right out the window. So I think we're seeing in this game, they haven't been punched in the face yet, and they can execute their plan. But you've got to be unflappable at Nationals. You've got to be able to execute no matter what kind of circumstances or team you're up against, and they just didn't do that last game, and I think they realized that. And, to, and again, I'm seeing pump fakes. I'm seeing throws from the far line. I'm seeing things that we didn't see once from Western in the entire Saginaw game. Um, as a coach, how do you get your players to get over that fear? How do you get Western to be this team against Saginaw, against Grand Valley, against any other team they play? Well, with a young team like what Nick has, I don't know that there's much you can do. It's your players, when they don't have that experience, they do get that deer in the headlights look. And I think as a coach, you can continue to keep pushing them to get over that fear, but ultimately it's on them to step up and realize that it's on me to make that play. No one else is going to make that play but me. And Nick said specifically his players did not do that. And so at the end of the day, as a coach, you can only do so much. It's on your players to execute the game plan. What I'm noticing so far is that there are 
about five or six WKU players that are controlling the entire game. 44 being one of the... 12. And what's, what's frustrating to me is that's, that's the depth that WKU has. The people that are on the back line are not producing the same way that Grand Valley or Saginaw Valley's back line would. So kind of sounds like UK is beating Grand Valley right now. It right? does sound that way, and it looks that way as well. I'll be interested to hear how that's turned out. That would be a massive upset. Wow, that would be a massive upset. Um, I, I, I have to stop the broadcast and just go watch that game real fast. Cause no, <laughs> we signed a contract. We're here We're for the duration. Uh, so from, uh, from VCU, I'm noticing I can't get his number. Uh, back right corner right now, he's got a green hat turned around backwards. He seems to be one of their power throwers. And again, to Western's credit, it seems like they are targeting him a little bit. And it looks like... Uh, on the other court, it looks like UK did just steal a point from Grand Valley. That's massive. That is, uh, that's an upset there. You know I, I did definitely did not expect that. Uh, but especially since UK actually got beat by WKU this year, that was UK, WKU's one legit win all year. So UK just not the type of team I thought this year that could steal a point from Grand Valley. But we talked about it a little bit in that Grand Valley UWP game. They just did not look... That's sharp. They looked a little bit lackadaisical, and I think maybe that's what happened in that point. Under 10 minutes left in the first half here. Uh, Western's still up one. Uh, with 9 minutes and 40 seconds, we could easily see two more points in this round. Um, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, but I would imagine if Western gets another win here, uh, I can't see any reason why they wouldn't play a super aggressive third point because they've got to see it right here. They're playing even more aggressive than they were the first point. And look at look at the man advantage they have. Look at these throws from the front line. This is the first time I've seen this from Western this season. Even in the alumni game, they didn't play this. And another great catch yeah, from number 44. Yeah, Josh Wynn's having an awesome, awesome game so far. And they WKU really needs him and the other Josh, number eight, Josh Hicks, to really step up here. Yeah, I got a chance to talk to Josh Wynn over uh, the lunch break. And uh, he echoed something that actually we had been talking about earlier. We said... Kind of, Western's very much a team that has a handful of very experienced, very, very good players. But other than that, they're a very young team. They've got a lot of learners. Uh, they don't have the advantage of someone like Grand Valley, where Grand Valley doesn't so much have a, they don't have any, what I would say, weak players. And I gotta go. We had another face shot uh, from a WKU player. It kind of looks to me like he lost his contacts, though, and they're, like, looking for it on the ground. So I really don't think that it's going to be an injury that we have to worry about, but it definitely was something that uh, that Alex is going I to go check out. he might have like, maybe a black eye. It looked like it grazed his face. It didn't look like a full-on dome shot. Which can sometimes be worse. Yeah, because the, the, just the friction, like a, it's almost like an Indian burn on your face. Uh, WKU trying to close out this point. We are just now crossing the eight-minute mark, so eight minutes left in this first half. WKU trying to go up 2-0 against VCU. And a great catch oh, by Bird. big Bring Bird. Back in Josh Hicks, number eight, who was one of two players out for WKU. And there it is. There we go. That wraps up that point. We will be right back with point number three for the first half. We'll be right there. Check and see with their commentator, see what's going on.